How's it going, everyone? Today, we're going to learn about a simple function that can improve the security of your Python scripts, especially the ones that rely on random user input. And as the code editor, we're going to be using Z today. If you haven't already heard about Z and are curious about trying it out, I've left a link in the description box down below where you can download it for free. As you're probably familiar with by now, in Python, we have a built-in function called eval which executes a single line of code and returns its result. Or in other words, it evaluates an expression. What's cool about it is that we can insert code as a string and it will return its result. And with this knowledge, we can create a very simple calculator app with zero effort. So let's do just that by importing any and then saying that the text, or we will call this user input of type string will equal one plus one. Now the result will be of type any because the user can literally enter anything and we won't know what we will get as a result. In this example, we will get an integer, but if we're taking user input, we're not going to know. So here we'll type in eval and pass in the user input. Then we can print the f string of the result equals. And when we run this, what we should get as an output is that the result is equal to two. And we can do the same thing with another equation such as 10, times 20 divided by five. And as a result, we should get 40 as an output. What's not so cool about eval is that it adds an entry point for someone like Bob to inject malicious code. This means that Bob can potentially steal secret keys, alter the code and do a lot of bad things. For example, imagine your program has some sensitive information stored somewhere inside it. And bear with me, this is just an example. In a well-written script or a program, you probably wouldn't store it directly with the main logic. But just use your imagination and pretend that you are storing it in this file. Now this time we're going to grab the user input using the input function. And here we'll just type in input. Then we're going to evaluate that input and return the result. So now when we run this script, here what we can do is type in something such as locals. This is a valid expression, which returns a result. And when we tap on enter, it's going to give us back all the locals, including the secret key, which is ABC123. And we were able to access that through eval. And that's not all right. The users should never be able to interact with the code written in a script, especially if it contains sensitive information. So you might be asking, what should we do then? Should we just give up? Should we just accept the fact that Bob will eventually hack our script someday? The answer is no. There's a much safer approach which allows the user to enter only literals, which is incredibly important for avoiding user code injections. So what we're going to do next is import AST. And AST stands for Abstract Syntax Trees Module. Next, what we're going to do is type in AST literal eval and pass in the user input. Literal eval only evaluates literals, not code. So Bob can't run cheeky commands anymore. Right now, if we were to run this and we were to pass in globals, our program would raise an exception because we did not pass in a literal, we passed in a command. That means that we can only pass things in such as integers or lists. It has to be a literal. We can no longer pass in code such as print, hello, because that's not considered to be a literal. So next I'm going to pass in some inputs and a few of these are going to fail because they are not literals. Then I'm going to loop through each one of these safe inputs and we're going to try to grab the result using AST literal eval. And if we run into an exception, we're just going to say that that expression is not allowed. So right now, if we were to run this, you'll see that this expression is not allowed because it is not a literal. It is an expression, while these three work just fine because those are literals that this eval function accepts. Then once again, if we try to use locals inside it, it's not going to work. And the doc states that the string or node provided may only consist of the following Python literal structures, strings, bytes, numbers, tuples, lists, dictionaries, sets, booleans, and none. Those are the only accepted literal structures. And there's also a small disclaimer here that a complex expression can overflow the C stack and cause a crash. 
And it's good it mentions that because using literal eval is not 100% safe. You still need to make sure to validate the user input before you use it. For example, if Bob decides to enter something extremely nested, such as a list that has 1000 nested layers, the parser will choke on this and raise an exception. Right here, we will get a syntax error that there are too many nested parentheses, but above that, you should notice that in the traceback, it originated from this. So even if this is the correct type and is considered to be a string literal, you're still going to want to validate the user input to make sure that this is not entered as an input. So to sum it up, if you're expecting user input and don't want that user input to execute any code, consider using AST literal eval. It will ensure that your users only enter literals into your code. Although remember to always do your own research on anything that takes user input. This is not a cybersecurity channel. And in our day and age of AI-assisted coding, vulnerabilities are everywhere. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.